Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about the top 10 facts about Reza Shah the Great. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Reza Shah Pahlavi was born on March 15, 1878 in Alasht, Iran, and died on July 26, 1944 in Johannesburg, South Africa, Shah of Iran from 1925 to 1941 who pursued her an independence and modernization foreign policy, and promoted economic development in the country. Reza Shah Pahlavi, Iran's king and creator of the Pahlavi dynasty, had an eldest son, Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi. Mohammad Reza, who was educated in Switzerland, returned to Iran in 1935. Reza Shah was forced into exile after the Soviet Union, and the United Kingdom seized Iran in 1941, and Mohammad Reza ascended to the throne of Iran. Here are the 10 facts about him. Number 10. Reza Shah Pahlavi, an army officer who became the monarch of Iran, and the founder of the Pahlavi dynasty in 1925, had an eldest son named Mohammad Reza. Mohammad Reza was born in Iran and received his education in Switzerland. He returned to Iran in 1935. Fearing that the Shah would collaborate with Nazi Germany to free himself from their tutelage, the Soviet Union and the United Kingdom invaded Iran in 1941 and exiled Reza Shah. Mohammad Reza took up the throne from his father, September 16, 1941. Number 9. He joined the Cossack Brigade at the age of 16 and also served in the army. In 1911, he was promoted to first lieutenant, in 1912, he was promoted to captain, and in 1915, he was promoted to colonel. He marched towards Tehran and took the capital in February 1921, as commander of the entire Cossack Brigade located in Kazvan. He forced the government's dissolution, and replaced it with Zia al-Din Tabatabai as prime minister. Reza Khan's first position in the new government was, as army commander-in-chief and minister of war. Number 8. Reza Shah married Mariam Savadkuhi, a cousin, for the first time in 1894. The couple had a daughter. Nimtaj Kanum, subsequently Queen Tadj Ol Maluk, 1896-1982, was Reza Shah's second wife. The couple married in 1916, and Queen Tadj Ol Maluk was Reza Khan's official wife when he became monarch. They had four children as a couple. Queen Turun Amir Soleimani, 1905-1995, from the Qajar dynasty, was Reza Shah's third wife. The pair married in 1922, divorced in 1923, and had a son together. Queen Esmat Dowlat Shahi, 1905-1995, Reza Shah's fourth and final wife, was a Qajar princess. In 1923, she married Reza Shah and accompanied him to exile. Reza Shah's favorite wife, Queen Esmat, lived at Marble Palace. They had five children together. Number 7. The British government aided the coup d'etat of 1921 in part, because it wanted to stop the Bolsheviks from infiltrating Iran, especially because of the threat it posed to British assets in India. Reza's men are thought to have received ammunition, supplies, and salaries from the British. According to a British embassy report dated June 8, 1932, the British were interested in assisting Reza Shah in establishing a centralizing regime. General Ironside reported to the British War Office that the Cossacks were under the direction of a capable Persian officer, which would solve many difficulties and enable us to retire in peace and honor. Reza Khan spent the rest of 1921 policing Iran's interior, putting down a series of uprisings against the new regime. The Persian Soviet Socialist Republic, which had been created in Gilan, and the Kurds of Khorasan were two of the most serious dangers to the new authority. Number 6. The animosity between Reza Khan and Zia ul Din Tabatabai, the prime minister at the time, grew steadily after his appointment as the minister of war. When Reza Khan was appointed as minister of war, Zia ul Din Tabatabai incorrectly assumed that he would abandon his position as commander of the Persian Cossack Brigade and that Reza Khan would dress in civilian clothes rather than military garb. This incorrect estimate by Zia ul Din Tabatabai backfired and it became clear to anyone who observed Reza Khan, including members of parliament, that he, rather than Zia ul Din Tabatabai, wielded power. Number 5. Reza Khan had essentially succeeded in securing the interior of Iran, from any remaining domestic and international threats by 1923. 
He was chosen prime minister upon his return to the capital, prompting Ahmad Shah to flee Iran for Europe, where he would remain, at first freely, then in exile, until his death. It persuaded Parliament to grant Reza Khan dictatorial powers, and on October 28, 1923, he took on the symbolic and honorary titles of Janab i Ashraf, His Serene Highness, and Hazrat i Ashraf. In Tehran, he promptly formed a political cabinet, to help him organize his modernization and reform goals. By October 1925, he had persuaded the Majlis to remove and legally exile Ahmad Shah, and to install him as Iran's next Shah. Initially, he intended to declare the country a republic, as his Turkish counterpart Ataturk had done, but he abandoned the plan due to British and clerical opposition. Number 4. Reza Shah's reign was divided into two different periods, according to legend. Between 1925 and 1933, figures such as Abdul Hossein Timurtash, Nosrat ol Dawla Firuz, and Ali Akbar Davar, as well as many other Western educated Iranians, emerged to implement modernist plans such as the construction of railways, the establishment of a modern judiciary and educational system, and the imposition of changes in traditional attire, religious customs, and mores. Strong personalities like Davar and Timurtash were removed during the second half of his reign, 1933-41, which the Shah referred to as one-man rule and secularist, and Western ideas and programs begun earlier were implemented. During Reza Shah's 16 years in power, key projects such as enormous road construction projects and the Trans-Iranian Railway were completed, modern education was implemented, and the institution of Tehran, Iran's first university, was founded. Many Iranian students received government-sponsored European education. Under Reza Shah, the number of modern industrial plants grew 17-fold, excluding oil installations, and the number of kilometers of highway grew from 2,000 to 14,000 miles. Number 3. Reza Shah was the ruler during the Women's Awakening, 1936 to 1941, which coincided with the nation's modernization. This movement aimed to eradicate the Chador from Iranian labor society. Supporters said that the veil hampered physical activity and women's capacity to participate in society and contribute to the nation's progress. The mullahs of the religious establishment objected to this initiative. The marriage law of 1931 and the Second Congress of Eastern Women in Tehran in 1932 are tied to the unveiling problem and the women's awakening. Number 2. General Edmund Tiny Ironside, the commander of the British forces in Iran, appointed Reza Khan, who had been commanding the Tabriz Battalion, to command the entire brigade on 14 January 1921. Reza Khan led his 3,000 to 4,000 strong detachment of the Cossack Brigade, located in Niyarik, Kazvan, and Hamadan, to Tehran and took the capital a month later, under British command. He pushed the previous administration to dissolve, and requested the appointment of Sayyed Ziyareddin Tabatabai as Prime Minister. Reza Khan's first job in the new government was, as commander of the Iranian army, a position he paired with that of Minister of War. He assumed the title of Sada Sapar, or Army Commander-in-Chief, which he held until he became Shah. The Persian diplomat in Moscow negotiated a pact with the Bolsheviks for the evacuation of Soviet soldiers from Persia, while Reza Khan and his Cossack brigade controlled Tehran. If the Soviets believed foreign soldiers were exploiting Persia, as a staging place for an invasion of Soviet territory they could attack, and occupy it under Article 4 of the Russo-Persian Treaty of Friendship. According to how the Soviets read the treaty, if developments in Persia threatened Soviet national security, they may invade. Until the Anglo-Soviet invasion of Iran, this treaty would cause great conflict between the two countries. Number 1. Periods during the Shah's reign have been identified. The country profited immensely from the contributions of many of the country's best and brightest during the first period, which lasted from 1925 to 1932, and to whom credit should be given for creating the foundations of modern Iran. All of Reza Shah's important accomplishments were finished or envisaged between 1925 and 1938, a period during which he needed the help of reformists to achieve the legitimacy needed to consolidate this contemporary rule. Abdul Hossein Timurtash, with the help of Farm and Farmer, Davar, and a large number of modern educated Iranians, was particularly competent at implementing many of the reforms demanded since the failed constitutional movement of 1905 to 1911. 
since the turbulence of the constitutional revolution, intellectuals have called for the preservation and promotion of the country's cultural legacy, public education, the creation of a national railway, the repeal of capitulation agreements and the establishment of a national bank. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.